Hi, this is Pat Ahern. What I want to go over right now is some of the common problems that may happen with a pitcher's delivery. Uh, the, the first thing that I want to talk about is a pitcher throwing out of the windup and how much head movement is involved. Now, when I look at a pitcher throwing out of the windup, I don't, if it's their personal style to have a big step or a big step backwards or a small step, that part doesn't concern me as much as what are their eyes doing and what is their head doing. So a lot of young pitchers who want to have a big exaggerated windup will take a big step and come back here. Now you see how much their head has to travel away from their line and then when they come back to it. And usually that de develops some inconsistency. Sometimes they'll come quicker, sometimes slower. But the main thing you want to look at is in a pitcher throwing out of the windup is how much is his eyes and his head moving. Give him as much body as he wants to do, but if his head is staying still, then it's fine. If you see this or this, it's going to be trouble. It's going to be inconsistent. You're going to give away some of your power. You're going to give away some of your control. The next thing I wanted to talk about is issues that happen in what I call the front end or near the release point of a delivery. So when you get to the point of your foot's down and you're going into release, pitchers will have some common problems. One of them could be flying open. One of them could be coming over the top this way. Another one could be coming in with a low arm. Okay, if we go back to our boxer analogy, think about how powerful a punch does this look like, or this, or this. All of them are really weak, and all of them are common problems that happen in the front end. Now for our purposes, when we're teaching youth, for me, 95% of those kind of problems are gonna be taken care of with an athletic stance, minimize your head movement, and getting, getting the lower body going in that first three feet. Because what generally happens is, if the legs aren't under you and you don't get it going, you have to make up for the lost energy with your arms. So now if I'm strong with my legs and I come here, I can stay strong, stay balanced, and deliver a punch or a pitch to you. If I got no legs under me, if I'm too tall, if I'm too slow, I get to here and I think, how am I gonna get this baseball into the strike zone. Have to do something. Get my shoulder out of the way, get my head out of the way, or come in low. All of which are weak, inefficient, inconsistent deliveries. So for, for my purposes teaching, I always say, if you have some issue on the front end, you have to look at what's happening in the beginning with the legs in that first three feet. And 95% of the time you'll find that a pitcher goes slow and timid or has just no leg kick and there's no energy coming through to the arms. So rather than saying, don't fly open or get your arm up, say, get your legs moving from the beginning and that's gonna take care of a lot of what happens out front. Finally, the last thing I want to address as, as a pitcher goes into his release point is glove positioning. What happens to the glove as he's going into a release point? Now, a lot of times you'll see players throwing their glove this way and pulling everything out of, out of position. Now, these are, these are all front end issues that need to be addressed, but not before everything else is right in the back. If the legs are strong, if the body, lower half of the body is moving down the hill into, into their release and they still have an issue with the glove, then that's when you want to check it. Now, the easiest thing for me to teach a young player about what their glove has to do is just to tell them, make sure that your glove, the left hand if you're a right-hander, is directly over your front foot the entire time. So the look would be from here, it just stays right over your front foot for the entire length of the delivery. Once the ball's gone, you can do whatever you want. You can do a dance if you feel like it but all the way through, the glove stays right over the front foot and goes into release. Now, another issue that might, might be, especially for the younger players, because their strength hasn't developed quite as much, they may just have a glove that's just too big for them, and you've got this huge weight on the end of their hand that's gonna pull their arm down, which pulls their shoulder down, which makes the ball go who knows where. So 
a, a good check for the younger players is just to say maybe the glove's just a little bit too big for their size right now. So if you have them use a smaller glove while they're pitching, they're going to have a little more control over that. 